course, will hit the wrong button at times and mess things up. All right, so cool. So, um, hey, Morgan, do I have a timer on? Because I, I want to make sure I don't go over anybody else's time. That was a great presentation by Tom, and also give Morgan and his team a, a round of applause for putting this on. Uh, these guys don't have to do this, especially on a Saturday. So uh, I'm going to get started here. And what I'm going to teach you today is how to risk only $125 to potentially make $1,000. The reason I have to put that potentially in there is because I'm registered, and plus it would just be a scumbag thing to do to tell you that there's no sense, there's no risk in, ro in the reward of $1,000 uh, $1, profit, and there actually is. So um, let's get started here. And the slide should advance, but it's not. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, so first thing, let's cover a warning. Um, required by the CFTC, the NFA, and the SEC. Uh, heads up, trading can be dangerous to your wealth if you don't know what you're doing. The only guarantee that I can make you uh, while you're trading is I guarantee you will lose money of some kind. Some people will lose a lot of money. Some people will lose all of their money. So if you don't know what you're doing, for the love of Pete, get some training on how to do this for uh, uh for real. All right. So we're throwing around, we're throwing around, yeah, to your wealth and your health. And now I am the world's worst. Like I'll get sucked into the comments that you guys are making on the chat box. So what I'll do is if you've got questions, hold them off to the end for me. I've got a lot of information to cover. I was only supposed to teach one setup. I'm actually going to teach you two. I'm going to try to give you a lot, a lot of value for here. So potentially you'll sign up for the class that we'll be doing uh, next Friday. All right. All right, my name is Hubert Sinners, and this is my no uh, BS approach to trading and investing. Now, this is going to be a little bit different, but in a good way, all right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is you may be able to do this. I'm not making any promises that you'll become lifelong friends with, uh, you know, Paula Abdul, or you'll be buddies with Rancher Branson, or if you will even, you know, lose right here, or if you will even lose three chins like I have recently done where I've, I've went down to about uh, three chins down to about a chin and a half. All right. So what we're talking about here is basically just learning how to trade different stuff and hopefully it helps you out. Congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. And here's why most people will not put stuff into action. Most people will not be spending their, their precious time on a Saturday to learn how to better themselves and to take their trading to the next level. So you're obviously in the right place at the right time. Congratulations. Let's do a little bit of math real quick first. Uh, this trade that I'm going to show you works only three or four times out of 10. All right. So what we're going to do is it only works 41.37.8%. All right. So what it does is it works 41.378% of the time based upon the stats that we have. So here's how it works. So in other words, if we're going to take 10 trades, all right, if we're going to take 10 trades, let's say six of these trades were losers and you were going to risk $125. So 125 times six equals a loss of 750. Now next, you've got four winning trades coming to you. If you're four out of 10, you're looking at four winners at $1,000, which equals $4,000. You come out with a total gain of $32.50 at the end of 10 trades. So don't let it discourage you that the trade setup is terrible because it's lower than 50%. Now let's do it another way. Let's say it's worse. Let's say it only works three times out of 10. So that would give us seven losing trades times $156 is going to give you a, which is a five tick stop loss which is going to give you a loss of $936 on 10 trades. Then let's say you only have three losers on this trade setup that I'm going to show you. That would be three times a thousand. And even in Kentucky, that equals $3,000. So you'd only end up making 2,064 bucks on this trade. All right. After the end of two trades, or I should say 10 trades. So there are five stages of trading and it's really important to kind of assess where you're at. All right. So, First, and the five stages are this, and we all go through these. First, you're going to learn how to lose money. You're going to learn how to lose lots of money, and you're going to get really, really effective at it, and it's going to suck. All right? Then you're going to learn how to lose a little bit of money, okay? And you're going to be frustrated, and you're like, oh, that's great. I went from losing massive amounts of money to now I'm only losing a little bit of money. Where's the gun, right? 
And then after that, you start a period of time where you go through treading water, where you'll make a little or lose a little, or you'll make a lot and lose a lot. So you're basically treading water and break even. On stage four, you start to consistently make some cash flow. And then on stage five, you get to the point where you're just making a killing. So I've got a poll here ready for you. And I would love to know, let's do a little instant poll here. What stage are you at? So right now I've started it. Go ahead and vote there. I'll give you a few seconds to place a vote. What stage are you at? Are you in stage one where you're losing lots of money? Are you in stage two where you're losing a little bit of money? Or are you like most people, are you treading water, you're making some, you're losing some, you're giving it back? Or are you consistently making a little bit of money? Or are you making bucket loads of cash? So I'll do a countdown real quick. Just vote on the screen, vote on the screen. All right, I'm going to count it down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I'm going to stop the poll. And then um, I think I can do a snapshot of it. And um, so it looks like I have no idea how to share it. There you go. Let's share it. There you go. Close for all. So it looks like 13% uh, of you are losing money. 19% uh, of you are losing a little bit of money. 46% uh, of you are treading water. All right, 18% of you are consistently making some money, and 1% of you are making bucket loads of cash. So that's about the norm. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this for all, and we're going to talk about a way to kind of get you through the different stages. I keep hitting the down arrow, and it's not working. Now, there's, a, there's another thing that you've got to figure out fairly quickly in your trading career, which is this. When you're trading, are you, do you have a big loss or... And after a big loss, is it little gain, little gain, little gain, little gain, and then big old loss? Or is it little gain, little gain, little gain, big old loss? So that's style A. All right. Style B would be it's a big old gain, little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, big old gain, big winner, little, win little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser, big gain. Or do you suffer from this? Big loser. Little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser, big loser, little loser, little loser, little loser. A is probably the most common. Most people lose money, and then they take their profits too quickly. And the reason they do that is because they're afraid that the small profit that they have is going to instantly be uh, sucked into the, the, the loss category. All right. So what stage would best describe your style? Got another poll really quickly. What stage would best describe your style? Big losers and little winners? So are you eating like a bird and crapping like an elephant? Or are you big losers or a big winners, little losers? Or are you also big losers and little losers? So I'm doing a, five, a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to stop the poll here. I know I see still people voting. So we'll get three more seconds. Three, two, one. And we're going to share the results and stop the poll. And there you go. You can see 62% of you have big losers and little winners. So we're going to fix that today. All right. We're going to fix that issue today so that you'll never have that issue again. Now, a little bit of it's psychological. So you're going to have to do a little bit of homework on yourself, too. And you're going to have to quit being, uh, you know, a bait. Uh, you're going to have to quit being a wuss and jumping out of the profits too early. Some of it's psychological. No joke about it. And I'm not, take, I'm not calling you a wuss or a baby to be mean to you. I know I've been one before. It, I'm talking to you from the heart. I, I know what it feels like to have a massive loss and then be in a decent trade and then take the profit too early and go, oh, man, why did I stay in that? If I'd have stayed in that, I could have got most of my losses back. But I jumped out of it like a little girl. All right, so I'm close that poll. So let's get to the next slide here. And if you suffer from C, you're probably like this little fella here. That's the most painful situation to be in where you're in stage one and you suffer from C, lots of losses, whether they're big or small. So just be careful out there. All right. It, so see if this will actually fix the issue of being in treading water and also having bigger losers rather than having uh, bigger winners and smaller losers. If you hold on to your winning trades longer, will it fix most of your problems? If you just held on to your winners longer, would it fix most of your problems? Now, obviously, you are a smart group of people, right? 
you, the answer is probably going to be yes. If you held on to your winners longer, it would probably help out way more than it would hurt. So that's what we're going to fix. We're going to talk about two different ways to fix this is better entries and better exits. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about pot roast. And now you're sitting there going, okay, this talk has definitely leaving the tracks here. Why is he talking about pot roast? Um, one of the reasons I want to talk about pot roast is there's this old fable. Okay. So the old fable is, and I'm going to tell it just like it's, 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 so there's this, there's this housewife. We'll call her Lisa. And Lisa is fixing pot roast and her husband, one of her, one of her uh, girlfriends comes over and says, Hey Lisa, why are you cutting off the ends of the pot roast? Oh, it's just cause that's how my, that's how my mother taught me how to um, prepare pot roast. We always, you know, we put, you know, we put the seasonings on it, we rub it in, we cut up carrots and potatoes, put it around it, and then before you put it in the in in the pot and put it in the oven, you cut the sides of the, the pot roast off. And she goes, well, why do you do that? She goes, I don't know, that's how my mom taught me how to do it. She goes to her mom, and, and Lisa goes, hey, mom, why do we cut off the ends of the pot roast when we prepare it? And she goes, oh, well, that's because that's how grandma taught me how to make pot roast. That's just how, that was her recipe, and that's how we do it. So Lisa and her mother go to their grandmother, and they go, hey, Grandma, how come we, uh, can you give us your recipe for pot roast? And she goes, oh, well, you put salt on there, you put pepper, you put a little garlic on it, you've got your potatoes, and you've got your carrots. And, and, and then um, what you do is, you, uh, then, I, uh, then you put it in the oven, and she, they go, well, wait a minute, you used to cut the ends off of it. Why did you cut the ends off of it before you put it in the pan and then put the pan in the oven? She's like, oh, dear. Well, the reason I've cut the ends off of it is the pot roast was too big to fit into the one pan that I had, okay? So one thing that you don't want to do is you definitely don't want to fall into the problem of it being passed down from generation to generation to generation and not knowing what you're doing. So from what you have learned, what is the best market to trade? If you're going to trade, you'll hear this a lot. If you're going to trade, you need to trade the S&P Mini 500, the S&P E-Minis, the 500 index. And the reason you want to do that is because they're the, the biggest, most volume. Everyone trades them, and you should be where everybody else is in the market. You should, if you're trading, you've got to trade the S&P 500. Because if you, if you can't trade the S&P 500, you just can't trade. You've probably heard that, right? Well, if you think about that a little bit, you know, who says that stuff? I mean, when you're talking about, um, you know, if you, if you trade them and then you test it out yourself, you trade them and then you get chopped up. And then you start asking your, yourself the question, man, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? This is really hard. I'm smart. I'm successful. But this is just way too hard to do. And, it, and then you start asking your, yourself the question like, man, is this thing rigged? And it's not so much that it's rigged. The slides aren't updating. There you go. The problem is, is you've actually been betrayed. You've been betrayed. All right? Now, when I say that, I don't mean, you know, somebody is – hoodooed you or something like that. They didn't know themselves. Um, but it's not your fault you've been lied to because they say that you should trade the S&P 500. And they are the other traders that have passed this bad story down from generation to generation to generation. The media is always talking about those stuff that has the biggest volume and the S&P 500 and the stuff like that. And then you hear it from other investors like, oh, yeah, you should trade the S&P 500. That's the thing to trade. And it just gets passed down from generation to generation. But did you test it? You probably did test it, but you probably tested it out with your real money, and you probably lost massive amounts of cash trying to figure out how to day trade or swing trade the S&P 500. So did you believe them, or did you just test it? One thing is you have to test, or you, you should test it first, and then you should trust but verify everything. All right? True or false? True or false here? If you can trade, if you can trade, you can trade any market. True or false? You think that statement is true or false? If you can trade, you should be able to trade any market. So I would say it's true, but it's a lot easier to trade something that matches your specific trading style and or your specific personality. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about What's the best market for you to trade? And then I'm going to show you a couple. I'm going to talk about the bond market and show you why I think it may be a better market for you to trade. All right? So if you don't match your trading style to the right market, it's going to be super painful and very frustrating. 
you're going to be as frustrated as a one-legged man in a butt contest. You're going to be busy but very, very ineffective. All right? Trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you is like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It's going to feel great once you stop. Okay? So now think about this statement. What's wrong with getting richer quicker? Now, I'm not talking about a pop dream here, but what's wrong with making money quicker rather than slower over time? Is there anything wrong with that? Do you have a limiting belief where you're like, no, there's no way I can make money fast? There's nothing wrong with it at all. So what you can do is you can shortcut. You can shortcut. You, you appreciate it more. That's fine. You could shortcut it by figuring out what trading style matches that market. So in other words, like if you're always chasing the market, you know, the E-minis are not a great strategy for that. You'd probably want to trade like um, – you don't want to trade like gold or ags or stuff like that. If you like trending markets that break out, okay, so gold would be a really good thing. E-minis or crude oil, if you are a trend trader that likes to buy breakouts, then that would just be your nightmare situation. All right, so how do you pick the best market to trade? So first thing you're going to want to look at is you're going to want to look at all right, the ATR, and you heard Tom talk about the ATR earlier. So the Dow on an ATR is 93 points times 5 bucks equals $465 a day. The S&P is a 10-point range times $50 equals $515. The NASDAQ is 25-point range times a $20 multiplier. You can make or lose $518. The Russell, 9.9, $100 a point. It, you can make or lose about $1,000 a day. The 30-year bond moves about $1.15 a day. It's $1,000 a point. You could make or lose $1,150 a day. Crude oil. Uh, uh, 1.83 points, 1.83 times 1,000 equals 1,830. Silver moves 63 cents, $5,000 a contract. You could make or lose $3,150 a day. Okay, Gold, about an 18 ATR, uh, $100 a point. You could make or lose $1,840 a day. And then down here is Aussie dollar and the euro. So by looking at it, you're sitting there going, man, we should trade silver. Not really, okay? So silver moves crazy. So first you want to know the ATR. You want to know the range. What's the plus or minus that you can do? And then you have to know, like, all right, well, how does these things trade? And here's the best analogy I can give you for that. So this is how, this is how the S&P or the Dow trades. The index futures go like this. They run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. That's just how they work, okay? That's just how that's just how they work. As opposed to gold works like this. It runs, then it consolidates, and then it runs some more. And you compare that to the way bonds trade. Bonds trade like this. They go up three, down two. Sideways, up three, down two. Sideways, up three, down two. Sideways, up three, down two. So if you're a trend trader and you like to buy breakouts, I would either trade gold or I would trade bonds. Bonds are a little bit more methodical. That you're going to stay in the trade more, and you can risk less money to make more money. So I'm going to talk about bonds. All right? Index futures are just famous for running and stopping people out. About the time you think you've got it figured out, it'll reverse, come back, and hunt you down. And if you don't believe me, what you can do, and please don't believe me. Don't, tr don't trust. I mean, you can trust what I say, but verify it. Take a look at a five-minute chart on the Dow and the S&P on Friday and compare it to gold and compare it to bonds and see which one you would rather trade, okay? And it'll, be, it'll just jump out at you like a sore thumb. Well, you can trade stocks, options, forex, futures, bonds. All of them have their own little personality. Um, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, you just need to pick one of them and stick with it. All right, we talked about sprinters and marathons. We talked about um, ones that I would avoid if you're new to the game. I would avoid silver. I would avoid crude oil. They are bipolar, and they will rip your head off, so be careful with those. All right, All right so why would you want to trade bonds and notes? And I'm going to specifically talk about bonds okay 
and we're going to talk about how to hold a winner. So the bond basics. So what I'm going to do is I've got 25 more minutes. I'm going to attempt to cover two different trade setups, my two favorite bond trades. All right. So pay attention. I'm going to go through it quickly, but I've broken it down in a uh, just a real simple methodology, and I'm going to teach it as if you've never traded a bond before in your life. So first, how many of you in here trade futures? Just by a show of hands. I don't have a survey for it or anything, but how many of you in here trade futures? A few of you, a lot of you, uh, quite a bit. So, all right. Future, all right. So all, if you're a stocks, an options, a forex, or just a futures trader, there's all bonds are is it's just a future. Okay, so you're not going to get issued a 30-year note on somebody's mortgage. All right. So we're going to talk about bond basics. So all it is is it's a futures contract. So here's how it works. We're going to talk about the months. We're going to talk about the time. We're going to talk about cautionary times, the symbols, the tick values. We'll look at dome. We'll look at the margins, and we'll talk about um, the uh, sneak attack trade, and we'll talk about the overnight trade. And that's where I'm going to teach you how to risk 125 to 150 bucks to make a thousand dollars. So the months for futures contract. Here are the delivery months. January is F. February is G, March is H. I have no idea who came up with this crazy, weird uh, lettering system, but they should be shot for sure. It makes no sense. Uh, April is J, May is K, June is M, July is N, and uh, August is Q, and then September. I have no idea why I put the U over there, but we got it on there. Uh, October is V, November is X, and then December is Z. So in the in the bond market, what you're looking for is these are the months for the bonds, H-M-U-Z. The acronym I use for this is Hey Man You Zipped, and all it translates into is H is March, M is June, U is SEP, Z is DEES, and there, there's the months that you need to know to trade the 30-year bond, okay? H-M-U-Z, March, June, SEP, DEES. And if you're ever confused, what you can do can you talk about futures? I am talking about futures. Bonds are futures. We're talking about bond futures. All right, so here are the specs. On most platforms, it's at US or it's ZB, all right? This is the 10-year. We're not talking about that one. This is the five and that's the two. We're gonna be talking about the 30-year, so it's HMUZ. There's the months again. Time to trade bonds. The bond market opens up at six opens up at 6 p.m., right, and then closes at 5. So they open up at 6 and they close at 5, and you're sitting there going, how in the world is that possible? Well, they trade basically 23 hours a day. All right. The open outcry is the best time to trade them from 8.20 to 3 o'clock. Uh, pit times are 8.20 to 3 o'clock East Coast time. And here is how you figure out how much a bond contract is worth. I've got a little cheat sheet here. Here you can see on the 30-year, uh, it, it, it's going to open at 6. It's going to close at 5. It's $1,000 a point. And each minimum tick move, you're going to make or lose $31.25. So that's how you keep track of how much a tick is worth. So the cautionary places that you need to be aware of is anytime there's a, a uh, Fed meeting, all right, interest rates, any other major economic news, like, uh, and you can use Econo Day, E C O N O D A Y, to kind of take a look at that and see if you can find the yellow stars and the red stars will tell you when you need to be very cautious in your trades before uh, you throw them on. So here's a tick value for the 30 year. 30 year bonds, every tick is worth $31.25. That is one pit tick. All right. You don't need the other ones because I'm not going to teach you the other ones because I don't have enough time. So these are the symbols, like if you're using TradeStation, you would be going uh, ZB, that's actually on the wrong side there. You'd go ZBH13, ZBM13, ZBU13, or ZBZ13. On TradeStation, it would be USH13, USM13, USU13, and U, uh, USZB, or USZ13. That'll give you your contract months. So here's how it works, all right? So I'm going to use my handy-dandy little ink here on this situation. So if you are going to trade bonds, and let's say you wanted to make a point, here's how they work, because sometimes bonds can confuse people. 
at 135, does everybody see 135 here where I'm pointing at it right here? Let's say, let's say that at 135, we were going to go for a full point all the way up here to 136. In order to get there, we have to go through 135, 135 and 130 seconds, 135 and 230 seconds, 135 and 330 seconds. Do you see that? So every tick is 130 second. So 135, 130 second, 135, 230 seconds, 135, 330 seconds. In order to do that, every one of those ticks is either going to make you or lose you $31.25. All right? $31.25. So that's where you get your $1,000 of a point. Now, the bonds, on average, move about 1.15 uh, points a day. The cool thing about it is they trade very methodical. They're pretty calm unless there's just some huge economic news release out. You can stay in the trade. You can risk about $125 to about $150. I'm, the drawing here is a little bit delayed. I swear to God I can put a – I swear I can do one – Two, five, two, one, five, six. I just have to draw it really slow in order to make it work. All right. So that's how the bond market works. Every tick, lift the pin. Yeah. Uh, on um, on the bond market, every tick is worth thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents. They are very deep. They're thick. You can see this is what the dome looks like. The bid and ask. They are very thick. Your trade platform may uh, may uh, chart it as one thirty-one. And 30, 30 seconds, and it may also chart it as 133.12. So it just all depends. All right? It just all depends on what your platform, how they represent it on your execution software. All right? Margins, intraday and overnight. Call your broker because every broker is different, but they could be as low as $300 to $1,000 per contract. All right? My personal broker, uh, this is the overnight for mo most brokers on a 30 year bond, uh, $3,375. But the cool thing is, is if you initiate, and I want to talk about this to your advantage, if you initiate a trade after 6 o'clock, at some brokerage firms, that counts as intraday margin because it's a new day. But if you held it from 6 o'clock all the way to the close, that would be overnight. Okay, So use that to your advantage. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but if you really think about that, if you don't have a big account, that's a great way to initiate a new trade setup after the open at 6 p.m. All right. Now, the first trade that we're going to talk about is the one where we're going to talk about where you can physically make a thousand dollars, okay, risking only 125 to 156 points. And I did this trade Friday, and I want to show you it. All right. So it's a 30-year bond reversal. Most of the time, this is how bonds work. Not all the time, but most of the time. So what they'll do is they'll have, you'll establish an overall trend, then they'll bottom out on the trend, and then they'll reverse back up at eight ticks, and then they'll sell back off. If that doesn't work, it'll fall back to 12 ticks, and then fall back down, and then they'll revert back to 16 ticks. So your job is to figure out which one that is and get in front of that. Okay, and I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to do that. How do you erase all the? There you go. Okay. All right. The first, you're going to mark the open on a five-minute chart at 8 a.m. You can also use overnight. For me, I use an overnight for the overnight bond trade, which is the one I'm going to describe. You can use it for an overnight, or you can use it for an intraday setup. Here's how it works. You can also use Globex, like I talked about. You're going to calculate using an 8, a 12, and a 16 tick reversal. And here's and you're going to use either a 4 or a 5 tick stop loss. If you're using a 4 tick stop loss, you're going to be risking $125. You're going to be risking $125. If you're risking a 5 tick stop loss, you're going to be using a you're going to be risking $156, all right? So it's a massive difference, $25 whole dollars, right? Um, if we take a look at the target, the target is going to be the target is going to be 32, all right? 32 ticks. So we're going to risk four to five ticks in order to maintain a target of 32 ticks. We're going to trail the stop when it starts working in our in our favor. Now I'm I'm sure you're sitting here going, this is great. Where is the trade setup? 
So first, you're going to look for a high or a low, but before you do that, what you want to do first is figure out the overall trend of the bond market, okay? And you're going to try to stay on the daily trend of the day. You're going to try to stay on the right side of the daily trend, the Globex or the day session, a 30-year bond, and when after you've established which way it's going, when it retraces, you're going to place either, in, in this case, we're going to be going short on an eight-tick reversal. And you're going to pick two, but not three points. Either pick an eight-tick reversal and a 12-tick reversal, or a 12-tick reversal and a 16 reversal. Don't do all three, because if you do all three, it's, the math is not going to work out in your favor. And you can even do an eight and a 16. All right, you, you're either going to pick an eight and a 12, a 12 and a 16, or a 16 and an eight. All right, when you look for that. I should have another. Here we go. All right. Let's go through the math one more time. Six losing trades, four winning trades is going to come out to net you a profit of 32.50. If it's worse and we use the bigger stop, let's say it only works three out of ten times, and we use the bigger five tick stop, then we're going to be only making two thousand dollars and two thousand sixty four on ten trades. All right, so here's the last three bond trades that I did in one of my smaller accounts. So in this situation, I'll be completely honest and transparent with you. I lost money here, and I lost money here. Now, you're probably saying, oh, you poor baby. Yep, I lost a massive $125 whole dollars on both these trades. Loser, loser. Now, good thing for me, on this next trade setup, we risked $125, which I could have potentially lost some money. And then wham, yesterday, we took it for $1,000. So not bad. We still came out ahead on out of the past three trades. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this trade. It's super simple. So first, are we in a, first, what is the overall trend of the bond market right now? Is it up or down? And it's a little bit of a trick question. Is the bond market in an up or a down trend? I would say it's in a massive uptrend on the longer term chart. But the short term most definitely is nasty and looks like it's going to go lower, right? So we're in a massive uptrend, but we've broken that massive uptrend. The shorter term price action is going lower. So we are correcting. Does everybody agree with that? Can I use think or swim? Yeah, you can use anybody for this trade. All right, so now that we're all in agreement, let's go to the next setup for the trade setup. So here's what you're going to do. On, uh, let's say, I'm trying to think. So, um, the sell-off happened during the day, all right? So the sell-off happened during the day on 5.11, because this is 5.10, you can see right down here. So this tra this trade just happened, all right? So on 5.11, we had a nasty little sell-off in the bond market, okay? And then what we did is we let it open up, reopen up at 6 o'clock right here at the white arrow. Do you see this? This is a Globex open. And then once it opened up, we let it sell off, and we noticed that there was a, a low here, and we're like, okay. It's sold off again, then what we want to do is we want it to bounce up for us. And once it gets up eight ticks off of that low, we want to short that. So we're going to use either a four or five tick stop loss, and we're going to use a 32 tick target. Now, the scary thing about this trade is at one point we were within two ticks of our target, and it happened at about four in the morning. Now, I was in bed, like most people, and then it came back and retraced and came back all the way up. But that's okay, we still stayed in it, and we still got our $1,000, okay? How do you know when to take the profit? I know when to take profit when it hits $1,000. That's how I do it. Now, you can scale out if you want to. There is the trade setup. You can see that we, we had a nice little sell-off the day before. It opened up at the Globex market. It sold off. It made a low here. We let it bounce up eight ticks. Now, the low was one, so I need to cover this really, really quick. The low was 146 and 430 seconds at this low point. Then all we did is we go 4 plus 8 equals 12. So we put a short order in it, 146 and 12, 30 seconds. And then we just went ahead and went to bed because we used a stop loss up here, and then the market just, you know, fell apart for us, which is what you're looking for. All right. That is the trade setup. Here's the profit we made from the snapshot on Friday. This is just one contract, one contract, not 10, not 20, just one, where we risk $125. You can see I was trailing my stop down, and this was two ticks before the stop, 
the, the target got hit. All right. Now, this trade has the two thumbs up seal of approval, and uh, that's the first trade. It's the overnight 8, 12, and 16 tick reversal. All right, so anytime you see a nice little sell off, it also works to the up and to the downside. All right, it works to the up and the downside. And the reason it works is just bonds are very, very methodical. So what they'll do is they'll sell off really good. And then when they bottom, they're going to retrace probably eight ticks. Okay, and then roll back over. Same thing is if they run up, they're probably going to pull back either eight, eight ticks, 12 ticks, or 16 ticks, and then go in the same direction. Uh, ZB on toss. Uh, it's best for overnight just because you want to you're, you're going to stay in the trade a little bit longer. Um, but you can do it intraday too. They work for both intraday and overnight trades. And I got one more trade set up. I want to show you. I was only supposed to share one, but I wanted to give you two. I wanted to just make sure that I I always over deliver. So the next trade is going to be a an a, a sneak attack trade. Let me erase this from the screen here. So on the sneak attack trade, bonds trade in one. 30 second, which equals $31.25. And here is the trade setup for this. Here's the rules for it, and you'll have it in your uh, your recording. What you're going to do is from, from 720 to 820, you are going to look for the range. Let me just go to the chart and skip the rules. I can just talk about it better. All right. So we're going to say that we are all right, the same thing for the sneak attack trade. Are we in an uptrend or a downtrend? For the sneak attack trade, uptrend or downtrend right now on a daily? We're in a major uptrend, minor downtrend, just like before, right? All right, cool. Then we want to focus on short onlys. We're going to pass on longs. Does that make sense? So here's how this trade works. What you're going to do is on your chart, you're going to start at 720, okay? You're going to start right here at 720. And you're going to track the low from 720 and the high from 720 to 820. So from 720, to 820, you're going to pay attention where the bond market's trading, and you're going to bracket that. You're going to say, okay, I need to mark the high and the low of that range. Does that make sense? Is anybody lost? I know you might be lost because you know, I've got a thick accent and I talk quick. Yes, this is East Coast time zone. East Coast time zone. All right, so from 720 to 820, you're going to pay attention where the bond market is trading. You're going to mark the high, and then you're going to mark the low. Since we're in a downtrend, since we're in a downtrend, there's one more rule I forgot to tell you. If the if the bond market from 720 to 820 is 17, 17 ticks or less, 17 ticks or less, then you're going to be okay doing this trade. If the range from 720 to 820 is greater than 17 ticks, then you don't want to do this trade, okay? So everybody right in here, everybody right in here, 720 to 820, 17 ticks or less. Everybody type it in, 720 to 820, 17 ticks or less. That's the first rule. Now, since we're in a downtrend, what we want to do is, since we've got this example, we're going to take 145 and 31 30 seconds because that's the high, and we're going to minus 145 and 21 30 seconds because that's the low over here. So we're going to subtract that, and that equals 10 ticks. So can we do this trade, yes or no? Does it qualify? Can we do the trade? Yes, we can do the trade. Now here's what we're going to do. When it breaks out of that low consolidation period that it put in, when it breaks out of that first, you know, the pre-market, the sneak attack trade, what you're going to do is you're going to short that to the downside you're going to use a four or a five tick stop loss, and then your target is going to be the range from 720 to 820. What will your target be? What, what's your target? 10 ticks, right? Because you went from 720 to 820, you moved a maximum of 10 ticks. Now, if, if from 720 to 820, if we were at 18 ticks, could we do the trade? Yes or no? Answer is no, right? No, 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 no. All right, so awesome. So here's what you got. We're in a massive downtrend. You take a look at the range from 720 to 820. And then what you're looking for is you're looking for a breakdown out of that range. You're going to risk four or five ticks in order to make the range of this one. So you're risking four to make 10. 
And that's the trade setup. That's the second one I'm giving you. All right. Here's another example of it. Here is your 720 open. Here is your or your pre-market open. Here's your 820. Your range is 10 ticks. And then you, you had a long signal here, but why wouldn't you take the long signal, even though it, it initiated a break a, a breakout of the high? Why would you pass on this? Yeah, I want it to be a minimum of five ticks, maximum of 17. Right, because we're in a downtrend. So then what we're going to do, as soon as we break out of that range to the downside, right here at this red hash, hash mark, you're going to short it at 145 and 20, 30 seconds. Your target is going to be 10 ticks lower, okay? And then your stop loss will be 145 and 25, 30 seconds, either four or five ticks. What, what's, your, what's the success rate of the sneak attack? Uh, it usually makes more money than it loses, okay? Usually makes more money than it loses. And what I do is I hate drawing the lines, so what I do is I just had a, a little indicator built up uh, so that it just does it for me. So then all I have to do is go, oh, okay, um, here we go. I've got the short entry. It says short it here. It says use this as my stop loss, right? Uh, short stop loss is right there, and then there's my target. And it just does it automatically for me so I don't have to think about it. All right. And that is the two bond trades. I just try to make it easy. Here's another Here's another example. Here's my long trade. Here's my long stop. Okay, so my long trade would have been right here. My long stop would have been right there. And then, boom, my target would have been there. So I just built the indicator onto the various different trading platforms so I don't really have to think about it. And then I just wake up in the morning and go, oh, I can do this trade because my lines on my chart tell me to do the trade. So... Um, so once your profits come, you will start to increase your confidence and you will become a better trader. All right? um, you can use a trailing stop, uh, John. There's nothing wrong with it at all. So what you need to have is, you number one, you have to have strong money management. You have to have a good entry. You've got to have a good exit. And with profits will come uh, confidence. So you got to have good setups. A good setup executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. All right? Good is good enough. Don't try to filter out all the losers or the stopouts. That is a fool's game and for suckers only. <clears throat> Enjoy the process and work through it. You're going to have some wins and you're going to have some losses. All right. On bonds, it's ZB or at US. Now, you're probably saying, that's nice. It only works for you. So here are some sample emails that I just uh, got from some from members. Uh, I've never had a mem I've never had a mentor, and I've been doing this on my loan and lost tens of thousands of dollars. I've been using the morning bond indicator and have been trading bonds for months and am finally profitable. You can't imagine how excited I am to get in get up in the mornings and trade bonds. I can now pull four to eight ticks nearly every day consistently. My win rate is seventy to seventy five percent. I found a way to get back in the game. All right. I have less stress and I'm encouraged about my future trading. Here's another one from Katrina. Uh, thank you so much for the bond course. I made a $700 on my first overnight bond trade. I have more confidence trading bonds now that I understand how they work. Here's one from Mary Ellen. I have one bond trade and made $900. I'm happy dancing. This is, this is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I, I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler. All right. And here's one from Bobby. Hubert, I've been using the bond indicator for three weeks. Uh, I've had 12 winners and only three losses. You don't need the indicator. I just want to be just upfront with you. You do not need the indicator at all. You can just draw the lines on the chart. And I'm not here to sell you the indicator. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to teach you the overnight bond trade. There, You can risk $125 or $156 to make 1000 or to teach you how to do the early morning uh, the sneak attack trade. You don't need the indicators. I just want to be crystal clear. Here's a, a snapshot I took from my iPhone, and you can see that where Dean made some good money here. Made $2,590 today trading bonds, NGC today, and then I, I was just telling him, nice, congratulations, great job. So uh, I want to give you a free gift on top of the other free gifts that we're giving you. So if you like the presentation, what I want to do is everybody on the presentation is more than welcome. I recorded the entire session on Friday. I'm going to give it to you for free. All you have to do is go over to, uh, I'll also give you free daily trading videos if you want them. All right? If you go over to hubertcenters.com, I'm not here to sell you anything. What, I'm, what I am here to sell you on is the upcoming class that we're going to be doing next Friday. All right? Next Friday, we're all going to be doing a class. 
This is about as much information that I could kind of cram in on 45 minutes. Hopefully it helped you and hopefully you got a lot of value out of it. So I'm going to give you free, free trading videos, one free trading video a day. And I've also got a two hour recording of what I just discussed showing you how I did it live on Friday. And it was just shot this Friday and I recorded. If you go over to hubertcenters.com and you opt in to this little box right here, I will send you an email with a link to the to the presentation or to the live trading that I did this past Friday as a, a thank you to everyone here. So we've got a special uh, a special event we're doing, all right? And you can just go over to hubertcenters.com, hubertcenters.com. I spell my name real weird. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the sign-up process. So, uh, Morgan, do you have a link for the sign-up course that we're going to be doing Friday? I don't have the link, but I know that. There we go. All right, so everybody on your screen, do you see um, it's 50% off for the first 200 students? Now, if you like the information that me and Tom have already presented today, just imagine how much more information we can give you if we both have. Is, this, is, it, is it over? No, 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 there's more speakers after me. Don't go anywhere. There's more speakers after me. I'm just going to be the one that tells you about what's going on next Friday. Okay. So if you go to the link that's on your screen, httpwebinar.tradingpub.resources, just click on that link right there that Morgan's posting it. Post it one more time for us, Morgan. If you go there, what's going to happen is there's going to be a website that pops up. And if you want to spend, uh, you know, two hours individually with us, what you can do is you, it's in a small one-time investment of $147, and it's all going to be pre-recorded, and we're each going to teach you more valuable trading information. So if you just go here, um, you can take a look at the offer. It's $147, and you're going to get the first 200 people that invest and say yes to this. What we're going to do is we're going to give it to you at 50% off, okay? So 50% off. Uh, now, look, there's 935 people in here right now. The first 200 seats are going to go fairly quickly. So you want to go over there right now and click Add to Cart and make sure. But I don't have time on 5-6. That's fine. What's going to happen is we're going to record it for you, and you will have a, a recording of the event so that if you can't make it, it's not a big deal. They will be recorded, and the recordings, uh, you'll, you'll have a link that's sent to you so that you can watch it at your future, at your future uh, leisure time. So... That's it for me. I just do want to make sure. Uh, uh, let me go through here. This is uh, the market, Masters of the Markets. It's going to happen May the 16th and the 17th. You're going to be talking um, to Tom, Nicholas, Dustin, and myself. And we're going to be going through individual trading strategies, eight hours of advanced trading strategies with experts. And um, it's going to be a great class. So you're going to learn a little bit of, uh, about uh, different things from each one of us. Uh, the cool thing about it is uh, if you sign up the first, the first 200 students that sign up will get it at a 50% discount. And then, if I can advance the slides here, I have no idea why they sometimes work and don't. I don't think I'm holding my mouth right. Okay. I keep hitting advance and nothing's happening. I think, it, I think it's stuck on that one. Eh, that's not a bad place to be stuck, though, I guess. See if you can advance it, Morgan. It won't. It will not advance for me. We, you, you can hear me. Can you hear me clicking? I'm trying to advance the slide, and it just won't go any further. So anyway, the the class. I don't even think if I can get it to go backwards, can I? All right. So it looks like there's a lot of people uh, placing orders, which is locking up a little bit. Let me see here. Let's see here. Morgan's trying to talk to me. Uh, this is the last. Oh, that is the last side of the presentation. All right, I got you. All right, so go over to the website link right here in front of you. And if you have any questions, just let us know real quick. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Morgan and the next speaker. I'll be here the rest of the time uh, answering questions. If you guys got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Also, remember to take me up on my offer over uh, at uh, hubertcenters.com if you want the two hours of video recording and if you also want uh, free trading videos sent to you on a daily basis. Uh, those are free just to come and to attend this, se this session. So um, um, I'm not sure how many orders we've got coming into the cart, but I wanted to thank you each and every one for being here. Uh, make sure that you do take us up on the offer. Hey, Morgan, what is the deal on the, the charity thing? I know I just got back from Haiti. What charity are you uh, uh, giving 10% of your profits to? 
Yeah, so so thanks, Hubert. Basically, what we what we're doing with the class is um, fifty percent of the proceeds are going to the three charities that we list on our site. One of them is in Alabama. Uh, it's actually a uh, school program that provides uh, GED instruction for at-risk um, youth. The second one is in Detroit. It's called Reading Works, which is an adult literacy program. Uh, basically, uh, their motto is kind of, you can't get a job if you don't know how to read or fill out an application. So they teach adults how to read who, who obviously cannot read. Um, and then the third one is a uh, charity in Uganda that actually uh, supports, it's a bead bead making program uh, where basically women in Uganda make uh, beads and then they bring those and work with retailers to sell them. So again, here's the website uh, that we typed in, guys. Uh, I think we have a lot of people hitting it at once, so if it didn't work for you, um, you just try copy and pasting that link. But Hubert, we really appreciate you being here. We've got um, two more outstanding speakers lined up. We're going to hear from Ross Mullins and then uh, Nick Chaheen. What I'm going to do is put a quick timer up here. I know Tom and Hubert uh, have been hitting it pretty hard for the past hour and a half or two hours. So we're going to take a quick, uh, we'll do put five minute timer up here. I know we've got a lot of people climbing up or signing up. Yeah, it should give you, if you're in the first 200, it should give you the discount uh, right away at the thing, basically for the 147. And the way that this class works is we knew that it's a lot of information to get in, in 45 minutes from each person. So we, we asked each of the presenters uh, to basically take two hours of their time and next Friday what we're going to do is uh, you'll have two hours with each of the presenters and then we also asked each presenter to come up with some way to give you guys access to live trading with them following the class so I think that uh, you guys will really enjoy that I know that not everybody can make it for that time so what we'll do basically is uh, we're going to record the entire class and you guys will have access to the recording and also we're getting each of the presenters they're going to submit their slides we'll put them into a course manual and you'll get a copy of that right on May 16th the uh, on May 16th basically what we'll do is we'll have an intro night that's going to be Thursday night uh, it's going to be about two hours where we're going to go through you know because some people in here have traded futures some people are options traders some people are forex traders some people are stock traders so what we're going to do on Thursday night is do a two-hour intro class kind of a uh, trading 101 to try to get you ready and give you the intro you know so you know things like how many ticks there are in a bond point what that equates to for dollars you know what the margins are uh, how options work uh, so the Friday class with the four speakers is going to be a total of eight hours plus the Thursday night intro session so really it's about 10 hours probably 10 to 11 hours of total education but uh, again I really appreciate each four of these speakers agreed to do this and uh, like I said it's going to be outstanding. I think you guys see that um, we they had a lot to share in 45 minutes, and so we asked them. Uh, and you know, too, it's hard with uh, this many people to get all the questions. So we said, let's do two hours each and have you guys in there, uh, you know, for a little bit smaller crowd, and that way they can answer all your questions and also give you an opportunity. Each of them is going to give you an opportunity for live trading after the class, where you can go in and trade with them live for all the people that sign up. So. All right, everyone. We appreciate you uh, being here. We're going to get uh, Ross's slides loaded. Uh, we're going to. We've got about two and a half minutes left. I know I've got a lot of people seeing the emails come in, uh, and we'll let you know when the 200 spots are up. But again, uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be here today. So we'll take about two minutes. Um, two minutes here to give you guys a second for those of you that want to take the class next week. Uh, the recording will probably be done and uploaded by next Saturday so we're going to get it uploaded immediately or that way if you miss the front if you miss next week's class or, or you have to miss a session or two you can access all the recordings and you'll have those available at your disposal um, to continue to study so again uh, we'll take a quick break here I'll give you guys two minutes to sign up and then we'll turn things over to our next speaker we've got Ross and then Nick uh, is going to follow Ross so Ross is going to talk about Forex trading Nick's going to talk about options trading uh, and then I'll come on and kind of close things out for the day. All right, good deal, guys. We'll be back in about two minutes. All right, guys, so you want to make sure that you take up Morgan and his team on this offer. It's a really good offer to learn from a little bit of each one of us. Um, go over to the link. There are only 200 spots available at the 50% discount. The 50% discount is for 147. That is, they're already giving you 
they're already giving you the the fifty percent discount by giving you the price of one forty seven. It's not fifty percent of one forty seven. They've already knocked it down from two hundred ninety seven to one forty seven, as you can see on the screen. You can also just click the big click here button on the checkout on the screen right now. So if it won't process, that's because so many of you are trying to order at one time. All right. So just keep trying. You know, server loads sometimes when you uh, when you keep doing it, a lot of people hitting a, a shopping cart, it'll overload the server. So just be a little bit patient and just keep trying to order, and it'll it'll get your order through there. Uh, if you wanted the um, if you want the free video of the recording that I did last Friday, yeah, you can just go over to my personal site um, there. But but really, I'm not really interested in promoting that as much as I am promoting what we're doing because we can raise a lot of money here for charity. All of us kind of combined together. The only charity that I don't kind of agree with one is the one teaching people how to read and write. It's all I can do to read and write. I'm I'm dyslexic as heck, and you should be able to knock it out. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I'm like, I can barely read and write myself, and I do I do just fine. Um, so go over to the website there, click on the sign up tab, add to cart, and uh, take them up on their offer. Good luck. Hope it helps. If you guys got any questions, just let me know. All right, good deal, good deal. Well, at this time, I'm going to turn things over to our next speaker. We've got Ross Mullins from Forex Traders Daily. We did refresh the slides, so if for some reason uh, you're not seeing the slides, try clicking F5 if for some reason you're not seeing the slides. All right, Ross, thanks again for being here, and you can go ahead and take it away. Hello everyone, let me first off get a quick mic check, make sure I am coming through loud and clear for everybody. Uh, since I haven't been in getting this check, hey, looks like uh, I'm coming through, so good to hear about that. Thank you, Morgan, and your group for allowing me to be here with everybody for a pretty short time, really. Uh, and hello everyone, thank you for coming in today. Uh, just a little bit about me before I continue on here. Uh, I've been trading at Forex exclusively since about 2002, focusing all of my attention to this market. And for the past five or years or so, I've been providing daily market analysis for seven of the major currency pairs through Forex Traders Daily in a live trading room. Now, before I get into the meat of the rest of my presentation, I would like to learn a little bit about the folks in the tra in the webinar today and, and who you are. So I have a few questions uh, and you can just type your answer into the, the message window there. First off, what is it that you trade? Uh, options, futures, equities? Really what I want to see is how many Forex traders are out here in the room today uh, because I don't want to feel like the only Forex guy out here. Well, I do see a lot of Forex folks, uh, stocks, futures, options. Uh, so, good news, uh, there are a few Forex traders in here, so I'm not all alone. Uh, next, just to get a little bit more information, what is it that uh, you consider yourself?